Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. I got to tell you, there is a lot going on in the world. And a lot of it has to do with major mergers and what's happening with finances. A lot of times we tend to think about finances when it comes to something that immediately impacts us like 401ks, our bank account, and so on and so forth. But there's other things that are impacting us in an absolutely huge way. And some of these major mergers and some of the things that are going on with the companies that we currently purchase from are of cause for concern. And so today, my guest, Brad Williams, who happens to be the president of Brad Williams Financial Services, is with us today. And he is someone that I feel values not only the industry itself of finances, but each person, and he has a huge, huge concern about integrity. And in this day and age, and being a Marine, integrity is of extreme importance. In fact, with his financial services, he is more concerned about making sure that things are right, the integrity is there, above any other type of compensation or fee that you would think most people would be after. So this is a man after my own heart in this. He's got over 25 years um, of addressing different types of financial services and concerns of retirees, business owners, um, and there's a lot more than that. He's got a lot of skills, and some of the skills is really being able to decipher what is really happening and how it's going to impact us um, not only as a nation, but as a community and as an individual and even as a family. This is really, really important. And today we're going to be talking about some things that might make your eyebrows go back and forth or you might even start thinking about some things that you hadn't thought about before. And there's a lot to my guest today, Brad, and he is going to share some of those things with us as he's on and he's going to help us tackle some of the things that you need to have a wake up call to. So Rebecca is sounding revelly to what's going on in the financial world and I wanna to welcome to the show, Brad Williams. Welcome, Brad. Welcome, uh, thank you, I appreciate that. I am absolutely excited because it's not often that I get a guest who places the integrity issue as high as a Marine. So I've got to ask you, are you a Marine? Well, my dad was. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you know what this is about. And so this is quite a, quite an awesome thing. And I am very, very impressed by that. How did you get into the financial services um, industry? Well, I, uh, uh, in college, I got a, a job with a a uh, little-known startup company that uh, ended up being FedEx, and I started down at the bottom and worked my way up and <laughs> became a manager and uh, moved around a few. And, and then uh, uh, one of my employees introduced me while I was still single to a financial advisor who uh, I started working with, and after about two years told me I had a talent for the business uh -huh. and would I consider coming to work for his firm. And, of course, I told him I bled purple and orange, and I wasn't interested. But oh. uh, uh and uh, t about six months later, I left a salary job and became a financial advisor. And that was, well, 30 years ago, January. So, uh, oh. uh, and hadn't turned my back. This is a long time, but you have seen a lot. I bet that um, a lot of people are asking uh, questions about what's going on now and looking at what happened to the real estate, it, you know, issues in 2008 and so on and so forth. But in my world, I am seeing some things that are going on that I think that 
everybody out there needs to be aware of because this is pretty significant when it comes to talking about the finances on an individual level as well as a corporate level. And that's just on a smaller scale. Is that correct? Um, yeah, you know, because we got uh, with uh, with Amazon and and the growth of, of that industry, um, you know, we're we're getting to the place where in other decades that the government would be looking at antitrust suits because uh, mm -hmm. of the power. And now with Walmart looking at Google trying to enroach on that business, there's there's going to be a, a, a massive competition here. And, you know, it's it's a rather, rather narrow competition between two leaders. Well, let's talk about that for a minute, because some of the viewers may not be aware of how significant this is with, um, you know, Walmart and Google teaming up and what kind of things that the two as they team up will be offering. And then not only that, but how that compares to what's going on with Amazon and and the competition there. So first, can we just kind of go over what would happen or what is the long-term goal that you're aware of between Walmart and the partnership with Google? Well, um, you know, they want the voice shopping and, and you know, the everything's moving to online. Uh, yes. People, when I look at my own purchases, just about everything my wife and I buy, we buy online now. You know, we may go to a store and touch it and look at it, but then we go shop and it's online. And so, uh, you know, delivery services, they're profiting on it, you know, but it's its really, the service is all about bringing it to your home. And Amazon's done a great job of that. And they've, you know, they branded it. They, they created that industry just like Federal Express created the overnight industry. And yes. so, they they they're good at it. I'm a I'm a prime member myself. But what Walmart's looked at is they've seen that they have got to keep up. Now the the difference is they're in two different markets. So Amazon tends to cater to a higher income whereas Walmart, you know, the middle and lower middle and lower income. Okay. And so that's where the differences have been and Walmart wants to start enroaching and enroaching on that upper business by you know making it easy because as as the economy uh tightens up and you know when when things start to get tough in the economy people start cutting out non-essential purchases and they start looking at discounts and i think what walmart's looking at is in the future as you know as we go through our normal uh, cycles in the economy is being able to enroach even more of that business from amazon but the the what america needs to understand is we're you know, we're looking at two massive companies. I, I was reading an article that some of companies like Kohl's and companies like this are going to be setting up places where you can do Amazon shopping there and, and look at their devices and return stuff there. And so brick and mortar retailers are getting killed now. Their profits are so narrow anyway, and people aren't going to malls. Uh, shopping right. centers are dying right and left. People are buying online, so really we're 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 coming to the clash of the titans. And what's going to end up happening is is the two big titans are going to be um, are going to be Amazon and Walmart. And this is absolutely huge, and it it plays a direct impact on our economy in a massive way. Yes, it will. I, it, you know, if you want to look at Walmart, many many years ago made a big deal out of the fact that you know they were selling american goods buy american buy american right and then they went through a phase where they started uh you know buying more and more from china and now if you go to walmart it's hard to find anything that's made in the united states there anymore uh, well, in fact it, it's hard to find something not made in china so it's hard from to an find, economic standpoint yes and it's hard to find a lot of stuff that's actually even on the shelf there anymore because back in the the day when even if you think about Kmart and Walmart, there was things in the store that you could go and purchase because you needed to have that. It was kind of the hardware of everything. Right. You know, from clothes to makeup to whatever. And eventually they went in into, you know, the super centers where they're offering food and things like that. But that ended up transitioning. 
And um, now, though, going into what you're talking about in reference to, you know, not having brick and mortar, even at Walmart, there's a lot that you can no longer get. They're not on the shelves, but you can get it online and have it shipped to the store. And that's correct. You're exactly right. We've done that many times. And even we have stuff shipped to the house from right. Walmart. Right. It's and I've got to tell you, e yes. Easier. It is easier. Now, I understand and that their Whole Foods purchase for Amazon is not going too well. You know, um, it's not going as well as they thought. So they're they're seeing something. Amazon seeing a little maybe things not working out like they wanted to in the food end of it because uh, some of the reviews I've read is, a, you know, Whole Foods prided itself in, in high quality. And some of the articles I've read, by the time it gets shipped, it's not so high quality anymore. And they've they've had some complaints, but we'll see how what they do about that. But the, the key is, is America's buying habits are changing. Mm -hmm. Now, you wanted to ask about economic impact. Well, one of the economic impact is going to be commercial real estate because – you know, it used to be you set up a mall somewhere, a big strip center with a couple of key drawing stores, and then everything else around it increased in value, and you end up with, you know, uh, fast food places, restaurants. You know, they all just you, – you'd build a small mall, and the next thing you know, all around it starts spreading out with retail and, and, uh, and dining establishments. Well, if the, if the buying um, habits of America start coming into where they do it at home – that's going to affect commercial real estate, which is going to affect how people invest in real estate, which is going to affect you know, their finances and their retirement. Absolutely, and not only that, but we're talking about eliminating jobs. Oh, that's exactly right. Now, there will be other jobs created you know, on the tech end of it and fulfillment jobs and warehouse jobs, but they're not going to be the retail. Um, you know, I, I can remember as a kid – in high school working at Penny's and being a stock boy uh -huh. and working at Bonanza as a bus boy and working at, you know, working at these retail establishments to learn how to work, to learn how to be there on time, to learn work habits. And, yes. you know, those things that, that are, that are being robbed from our youth today because there's jobs aren't there. Those I just jobs just aren't there. I agree with you. And then you have, um, and, and not only that, but even if they went into one of the other sectors that you're talking about, a lot of times the, you know, warehouses are a very long distance away. I know that Amazon was um, advertising a mass amount of positions that were available, but a, a lot of the uh, advertisements that were placed, you know, the the job seeker would have to travel and the eventual hiree employee right. would end up having to travel an hour each way or more to go to that particular warehouse, which brings me to an issue that I'm currently having a bit of a challenge with. Um, most of my audience knows uh, that I'm a retired police officer and Marine Corps veteran. So biggest things for me is home security, personal safety absolutely huge and now we are seeing that this industry is going to have it so that people can go deliver the items that are being ordered and actually go into your home and leave it there wow now that's scary it is very scary and this was one of the reasons i wanted to talk to you so so desperately tonight was to really get out the message that these types of things are really creating havoc in the community financially and in a number of ways that have a ripple effect. And so while yes, other jobs are created like delivery, you know, what is the challenges that are going to be faced with that? And, um, if you hear recently, there is just a huge amount of thefts going on from, unfortunately, FedEx and UPS drivers and so on and so forth, leaving boxes and packages on people's porches and they're being swiped. But now we have, and I'm not saying that there's anything to do with the employees of those, those companies. My challenge is, you know, wh what kind of background check is going to be done on someone who is going to be going in to a, a customer's home and delivering goods and it being safe, you know? Well, if they're, if they're driving a commercial vehicle, 
Um, there's quite a bit because they're regulated by the Department of Transportation and the Public Service Commission. So um, I, I don't think that's the issue, you know, um, where where you hit on it is that there's a cottage industry now of people who during the holidays follow behind the FedEx and the UPS trucks and swipe the packages right off the door, you know, right off the doorstep. And which is why yes. a lot of the – you know, these new security devices called, you know, like Ring and stuff like that that are video monitors that turn on as soon as movement near your – near wherever they are is triggered uh, are, are really good. And in fact, it's probably good to have those anyway, even regardless of delivery because then you can monitor your house and, and you know, if somebody rings your doorbell, you can – answer the door they're, they're kind of neat you know because somebody rings yes. the doorbell you might be in cleveland and and say hey can i help you <laughs> and they're like, yes, oh, but huh? this new service that's being offered is actually allowing people access to go in home in the home while the person isn't right, there i know but, i understand yeah. yeah now that's scary that and that's scary with what because you said, yeah go ahead um yeah which you know i wouldn't want them coming in my home uh you know you we'll we'll work out some other arrangement <laughs> But yes. uh, um, and and I wonder how America is going to adjust to that. I, I I don't know that that's a, a real smart move in any in any company's you know in any company's uh, business plan. But uh, we'll see. You know, there, there's been all kinds of things people have tried that didn't do too well. Uh, we all remember New Coke, but um, you know that that is scary to have that kind of access. And you being a police officer, I can understand why that concerns you. Oh, I know yes, from a yes. standpoint of a, of the person delivering, if they're, you know, if they're driving a commercial vehicle, um, they're they're pretty well regulated. And those there's tracking on the trucks and tracking on the packages, and just from my experience in that industry, it's it's really difficult for a driver to steal from the truck. It, it is very difficult for the driver to steal from the truck. Uh, that doesn't mean somebody can't get creative enough to do it, but it's very difficult to do that because those things are tracked so tightly. And where the where the trucks go is tracked. Um, you know, with the digital capabilities of of monitoring of these trucks, you know, they know how fast they're going, how many times they break. Uh -huh. You know, there's there's all kinds of that going on. Um, and uh, but the the fact you know somebody is offering an in-home, you know, you better, you better make sure that there's some severe background checks going on. Yes. And then not to mention what, the, what you said, I mean, you've got those that will follow the truck. And so if they see how the person ended up gaining entry to the house, if it wasn't, I mean, there's just so much to this. I have challenges with the, a, a lot that's going on here. And we know that when you get into these, um, you know, major companies that um, are so massive, and I, obviously the word in Amazon this speaks for itself, right? We are Amazon. <laughs> that's right. You know, and that and, and that really, that's their goal. When you look at at the at the extent of the businesses they're in, and the products they're offering, and the leverage they have, um, you know it. When you talk to a, a vendor for, for Walmart, and, and I won't get into detail there, of people who are contracted to provide them goods you know, for the stores, um, once you become married to Walmart, uh, it's not a two-way street very long, and then you're, you're pretty well wedded to it. I had a, a client that had a business who decided not to do business with Walmart because of their terms for sale. And uh -oh. when a company, and this was 20 years ago, you know, they, he was going to have to keep a certain amount of goods in the warehouse that would be available. They weren't guaranteed to be sold. And it was going to be, you know, 120 days till, till they got paid. There were, you know, it's going to be a lot of volume and it would have made his business very good, you know, very successful. But he decided to go another route and he never regretted it because uh -huh. once they get you, they've got you. Right. Because you're, you're, you're depending on that volume. And then every year they come back and they extract a little more discounts from you. And that's the problem when you're dealing with a, with a business that big. And if we're looking at the fact that our choices of retail are going to be narrowing down to, you know, predominantly, ultra, you know, predominantly Amazon and Walmart, that gives both of them a lot of power. 
Oh, absolutely. It does. I will absolutely agree with you on that. And my biggest question is being that this is your specialty and the viewers are going to be just across the board when it comes to our show. You've got individuals, you've got businesses, so on and so forth. What is some of the best tips or techniques for individuals and those mom and pop shops and the brick and mortars that really need to sustain themselves? And how can they also get in contact with you so that you can educate them and get them tracking in the right way that they need to go in terms of whatever it is that they're looking for. Again, I really have been just very impressed with the integrity that you have, and I want my uh, viewers to be able to resonate with someone that they can trust. Well, you know, if you're, if you're in retail, the, the best thing is find the niche, you know, is, is provide a service-oriented business. Because if you're providing that extra service, you can command a higher price because you're not going to compete against Walmart and Amazon on price. But you could win it based on service. You know, there's an old saying that we that I learned when I was back in my in my delivery days. You know, if you you can um, you can you know win it on price, but you got to keep it on service. And so if you're providing a good service that people are willing to pay for, you know, give you an example, the dry cleaners here in town, I pay extra for my shirts to them because they call me by my name when I come in. Oh, I love it. They know me, you know, and, and so I don't mind paying it. And I also know when I've had problems because they know me by name and I come in and I say, hey, you know, you tore this or whatever. They don't question me. They just replace it. And that hasn't happened very often, but. Um, or really hardly at all, but the fact is, is they took care of it and they gave me that special attention that, that people are starving for today uh -huh. that people will pay extra for that they're not getting. Very true. That is very true. I, I would agree even on a personal level because I personally avoid the self checkouts. I go to where there's a person. Right. And, you, you know, you, that's a good point. You know, when you go to fly, think about what, what the job market has, the impact that technology has had on the job market is that you can almost get on an airplane these days with the exception of TSA with never really having dealt with an individual. You can check that's in online. True. You can print your boarding passes online. If you're not checking a bag, the only time you really check – check with someone other than TSA uh, is when you're at the gate and they scan your boarding pass. I mean, that's pretty much it. And then you, and you can think fly of to all the, the people that are cut out of that. <laughs> What's that? I said, and then you can fly yourself to the Amazons. Yeah. Then you can fly yourself to the <laughs> Amazon. That's right. <laughs> so um, talk to me a little bit about where our, you know, viewers can, Find out the types of services that you can do for them and um, and anything else that you'd like to share so that, um, you know, we can we can help make this as palatable as we can, because I don't think we can reverse technology in the in the wave of the future here. But we do need to be educated and we do need to find ways to protect ourselves as these things are. Um, you know, beginning to emerge in our social culture? Well, um, you know, they can, my website is, is www.askbradwilliams.com. I often joke, if you've got a financial question, you just ask Brad Williams. But, um, you know, my, my practice centers around those who are, uh, who are, who are looking for retirement advice. So, you know, I look at that in, at many different levels. And, you know, you've brought up a couple of things that, that I educate my clients on and, and provide a, uh, um, a checklist for them to secure their, um, their internet life. Because Ooh. one of the biggest threats to their security is how they do their passwords, what, what sites they go to, if they bank online, if they do their investing online, how do they access it? You know, do they have complex enough passwords? Do they change them on, with the right frequency? All these little things that, you know, 
that people really, if you're with this digital age, you need to be a moving target, not a sitting target. Correct. And if you're constantly changing your passwords and things like that, you're a moving target. And that's, I'd much rather be a moving target than a sitting duck. Well, I think it's really important for the audience to get in touch with you, find out how to um, not only secure themselves uh, financially, but as well as online, because there's so many uh, detrimental things that can happen without being cyber secure. And um, there's, there's actually some significant things and reasons for it. And this would be an absolutely fantastic opportunity for them to um, work with you and become knowledgeable not only for themselves but especially if they have children in the home well i provide a uh, a free checklist uh, i offer it on my radio program that i have uh, here locally and uh, it's a cyber security checklist if, if they'd like to email brad at askbradwilliams.com i'd be happy to send them a digital copy they can then go through their own personal internet life and go through the checklist and it will help shore up the security and the defenses around their their personal finances. I love it. This is one area that is of extreme importance to me and I'd love to uh, have you back on the show and do just something on cybersecurity. I, this is an area that I think people really are lacking a lot of um, self intel on and uh, we have things that are accessing the home now that really shouldn't be. I just, I was really fired right. up not too long ago about some of the toys that are being accessed via non encrypted or even password enabled Wi Fi products. And you're talking about dolls, talking dolls, and so on and so forth. And we just, we have just moved into this huge arena of cyber everything. And we have so many areas that we need to protect ourselves from the financial industry to the cybersecurity industry. And you are the guy that I would like to invite back on the show to talk about that. Oh, I'd love to. I've, I've got many bits of information. In fact, I do a, a client education program where all I address is cybersecurity. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is huge. I am, and I know that the audience would be just ready to tune back in as soon as this show ended because there's so much that needs to be uncovered here for the for the person at home and the biggest challenge I think is especially for those who are in the uh, you know sort of the golden years of life that didn't have experience and you know they're lucky to turn the computer on and feel you know confident in getting on and going to Facebook and stuff like that and there's a lot that needs to be done on so many levels from the old to the middle to the young and vice versa. Well, and just like you said, Facebook is a great tool for cyber thieves mm -hmm. because a lot of the security questions they're going to ask you, you've answered on Facebook. It is true. It when is you true. put in all your personal information and you haven't shut it out to anyone who's not deemed a quote friend, you have basically given them those password questions to get around your passwords. That's correct. And even if you think you've deleted something off the net, it's still there. Nothing, oh, yeah, nothing that's what, goes away. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing some of the things that the, the youth posts today and they, they have no concept of that coming back to haunt them when they're looking for a job 10 years from now. Yes. You know, the biggest challenge with that, see, I mean, we have a whole other show to go into, but the biggest challenge with that is that um, they feel like they're, the employer doesn't have the right to go in and do that. But absolutely, especially if they're doing like the Walmart, Google merge and the Amazon and those competition and they're in the cyber field. I mean, they have to know, those employers have to know that their employees can be entrusted. But I do want to thank you so much, Brad, for being on the show. I think that you're an absolute asset um, to our community. And I really definitely want our viewers to get in touch with you. And I will be making sure that your information is available in an article that goes hand in hand with this show. So I want to thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for having me.
And for those of you watching, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Rebecca Sounds Reveille, brought to you by the Liberty Beacon, TLB TV. And again, share the information that you find out from here. Give your friends, your family, and your colleagues the wake-up call, the Reveille. Thanks for watching.